Hello everyone, Kanasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux, and in the last episode, we finally assembled Trap, the totally reliable assembly platform, thanks to the Unknown Kerbal for that name. I didn't mention that in the last episode, but yes, they were the one that provided the name in the comments. I got the most likes, so I thought, yeah, that's, that's definitely a good name for this space station. Anyway, what we're going to be doing in this episode is awakening that beast and we are going to be producing our first ever crewed interplanetary vessel. It's going to be very big. I did design it on a live stream a few weeks ago. It's ginormous. It's huge. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I've decided to go for something that big with that many parts. Obviously, I really hate myself and I'm going to have to sit through some really long burns to get that anywhere. Anyway, what we have designed now is a additional module that we are going to connect to Trap. Now the reason why, or what this is going to be even, it's going to be a extra place to store specialized parts and material kits. Because in order to make the ginormous interplanetary vessel that I do want to create from that space station, well, we're gonna need 75,000 material kits. To produce that craft. It's a lot, and in order to store that many on the space station, well, we need more storage. So that's exactly what this is going to be. And this is going to be half filled when we launch it as well. It's not going to be completely full of material kits or specialized parts. In fact, there's no specialized parts on this at all. But yeah, in order to save me launching several mantas in order to fill it up, well, I thought I might as well take up as many as I can on top of a Barbarian 1 launch vehicle, which is my launch vehicle that is capable of lifting 75 tons to low road orbit. We did have a little bit of an accident landing the booster though, unfortunately. Well, we landed it softly, but it decided to tip over, which meant that it blew up. But apart from that, the rest of the launch was a complete success and we are able to take this new storage module which once again is half fooled over to the space station. And there we go, just like that in the blink of an eye, we can arrive. Now, I designed this station with lots of docking ports. So if I was to put more stuff on, then I would have a lot of options where I can place new modules. So we, we've got loads of room for this. And this is one thing as well, the docking with this space station. I've tried to do it fairly logical so that when we dock fuel to the station there is a docking port that is very close to the fuel balls so the fuel doesn't have to travel magically through the entire station to get to the fuel and all of the crewed compartments well that all has docking ports that we should be able to get the crew nice and safely i'm not playing with connected living space mod because i like not having that restriction i still design my craft around that kind of ethos with the fact that well we are going to not move crew through a fuel tank but sometimes that mod can be a little bit buggy and it's a little bit weird so i don't really like playing with it i used to play with it all the time but it's something that i have since removed anyway we were able to dock that successfully now we're going to be back in the vehicle assembly building very briefly to work on our liquid hydrogen resupply vessels yes we are going to need to launch an awful lot of these. This is capable of sending 40 tons of liquid hydrogen at a time. Liquid hydrogen is going to be the fuel that I am going to use to power the interplanetary vessel, which still has yet to be named. And we'll see what it has been designated later on. But anyway, it is going to use, I think, trimodal atomic rocket engines. So NTRs, I, I can't remember the exact name for it, but that is going to be running on pure liquid hydrogen. It gets a specific impulse of about 950 seconds in vacuum. It's quite good. It's probably the best engine that I've got at the moment for going into planetary, which is why I want to use it. And we are going to be using four, but we are going to be burning lots of fuel. So <laughs> yes, we are going to have several trips, but this is going to be the only trip of the fuel that we do in this episode. This is going to be the only fuel that we deliver to the station because I wanted to have a little bit of fuel on the station then that way, when we build the craft, what I can do is I can move the craft's orbit and then we will send separate refueling missions up at a later date in the next episode. 
because in the next episode is when we will be sending that ship off on its merry way. Anyway, with a few slight maneuvers around road, we are more than capable of getting our rendezvous with the space station and we are now just going to be attempting our docking maneuvers. And one thing about rendezvous as well, I think I was talking about this on Discord, I really like doing rendezvous with Principia now. In fact, I think I prefer the way you plot out your rendezvous with Principia to stock KSP. I remember when I started this series, that was the one thing that I was really worried with with Principia is because I'd never done it before and I thought, well, the spacecraft are going to be constantly moving. Everybody is going to be pulling on it. It's going to be a nightmare to rendezvous. But actually, the way Principia does it, it's really, really easy to kind of plot out where you're going to be. You have your target reference frame, which is just amazing. And honestly, I think after this series, I, I never want to stop playing with Principia. It's been such a game-changing mod, and I am in love with it so much right now. It's, it's amazing, honestly. If you've never tried it, I'd definitely, definitely recommend it. It obviously is more difficult than stock KSP, but it is super fun. Anyway, what we saw there was the fuel tank, the resupply vessel... Burning up in the atmosphere, I thought I'd show that all the way to completion. I was kind of hoping that would completely burn up in the atmosphere, but it didn't. I did remember to turn on re-entry heating as we were coming down though, because as I have mentioned before, I have that cheat enabled so that my craft don't spontaneously, spontaneously, God, why can't I speak today? I'm really tired. I'm doing this before I go away for my weekend and because I want to get this all voiceover done so I've got videos to release. But yes, spontaneously combust. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I have that cheat turned on so my craft don't spontaneously combust because that is something that does happen all too frequently and I'm not really sure why or how or if there's another fix. I don't think there is, but it does mean I have to play with that cheat on. Anyway, we have now brought the Manta that I launched at the end of the last episode up to the new space station where we're going to transfer across all of the material kits on board this. This Manta didn't have any specialized parts on, so it's just material kits that we are going to transport across. And that is the first of many Mantas that we are going to be sending to this space station. Like I did mention earlier on, we are going to need 75,000 material kits in order to produce our first interplanetary vessel which is a lot. That is a stupid amount. It's going to take a lot of launches. These can take, I think, 30,000 per double launch of a, of a Manta. So when we launch a single Manta, obviously there are going to be two strapped onto the side. Yeah, that's 30,000. So we're going to need to do three of those at least in order to get everything up. Anyway, with that being delivered, it is time to return our third Manta to the Kerbal Space Center. And once again, I am more than capable of getting a good targeted landing. Although the way that I came down in this, I did pitch down quite aggressively in the atmosphere. So obviously these mantas, they're built of some really stern stuff. The top of this must have heat tiling on it as well, because we pretty much nose down during the worst of the atmospheric re-entry. So yeah, that theoretically should have burnt up, but no, there are magic heat tiles on the top that stop that from happening, which is kind of nice. Means that <laughs> I can get much better at my targeted landings, and obviously that is now the third one of these in a row that I have landed successfully at the Space Center, which is nice because it means I can recover them, and I am gaining a little bit of a collection outside the front of the space plane hangar. Anyway, we were able to get that new Manta set that we are launching up into orbit. Now what we're going to do is try and recover the first stage booster. And this went a little bit odd. When we separated, well, one of the air brakes broke off. So I was only able to use two to slow us down. However, we are able to get, I think, our first successful touchdown of one of those boosters. They always seem to break. But despite the fact that things went wrong, we were able to safely recover that. Which is always nice because these things do cost an awful lot of money to send up. And I did mention in the last episode as well, this tank or the upper stage booster, I have now added parachutes to this because I can't land this. 
It's far too heavy with its current shape for those wings to provide enough lift to get us really flying anywhere. We have to be moving at something like 250 meters per second in order to gain any lift, which is just quite frankly ridiculous. So I decided to stick some parachutes on and land it that way. Unfortunately, we still lost one of the engines though, and those are the expensive things. So we're going to have to either tweak the parachutes a little bit, make them a little bit stronger so that we come down a little bit slower, or th there'll be something that I can do in order to fix that problem. There's always a list of problems to fix in KSP, I feel. It's always just, how do I solve the solution to this problem? But yes, no. It will be something that I go in and fix at a later date. Anyway, we have now rendezvoused with the new space station with Trap, and we are just going to perform a docking maneuver. Honestly, I quite like docking now. I've had a lot of experience with docking because I still have not unlocked MechJeb Auto Dock, which is something I'm heavily reliant on, or I used to be reliant on in the in the past even. But no, I can do that all right now, especially using docking port alignment indicator. It's something that I'd never really used before. In the first couple of videos for this series, people suggested that I learn it and get to use it, and I don't know what I would do without it now. <laughs> Honestly, it makes docking so easy. It makes it so nice and so simple. Anyway, we have now actually docked, so what we're going to do is we're going to come open up Ship Manifest and transfer all of those material kits over. You can see we have about 66,000 at the moment which is still about 10,000 shy, but luckily with the additional Manta that we sent up, well, that should be enough. They do also have, I think, about 2,000 specialized parts on each. We're going to need about 4,500, so that leaves us a deficit of 500 specialized parts. But in order to do that, when we send a crew up to trap, I will send it up on a crew buzzard, which we will see later on, or a cargo buzzard, which also can take crew up. And what we will do is we will whack those remaining specialized parts on there. And we're also going to be sending a much more dangerous payload up with that when we do get round to that as well. Yes, because I do not have any enriched uranium available on the space station in order to produce the enriched uranium that we need for the nuclear reactor that is going to be on the interplanetary craft. But once again, we were more than capable of landing one of those moths. No, no, what are they? Mantas! One of those mantas at the space plane hangar. We now have four sat outside the front. Yes, we're, we are really amassing quite a collection. And I did want to leave those there permanently. And I was going to. However, because they are within physics range of the launch pad, it was making my launches be really laggy. So I did have to get rid of them, unfortunately, after landing the fifth one, which will be the one that we are going, well, which we're seeing right now. I suppose that's a little bit of a spoiler for later on in the video, but no, we are going to land this once again successfully at the space station. That's five in a row that I was able to do. So my targeted landings have definitely gotten a lot better in the past couple of episodes. Speaking of, here we are. Basically what I was talking about 20 seconds ago, we are going to be landing at the Space Center and everything is fine. I think this landing was a little bit janky though. Came in a little bit hard, bumped the runway quite a bit. There was a little bit of a lag spike there. Yeah, that's because all of the vessels were loading up. Like I said, yeah, we, we are going to get rid of them after this because it was getting painful to launch and it was getting painful to land. There we go, five of the Mantas all in a row, all looking very pretty. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite glad that I managed to get five of those over there quite nicely. But anyway, what we are going to be doing now is going to be launching the first ever crew to trap. So we have Rags Kerman is the pilot. We have Hernan Kerman, who is an engineer. Michael Kraken Kerman is an engineer, and we have another three engineers on this as well that I can't see at the moment because we can only see three Kerbals at the bottom right. That is something that I will I will try and call out their names as we see them later on with Ship Manifest. I know I've left that in this video so that I should be able to see who else we have on board, but I thought we'd, we'd mentioned those three at the beginning anyway. So we are going to attempt to land a booster yet again. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a spin on this, which was a bit weird, and we run out of fuel maybe five meters from the surface of road, which is never, ever good. And yes, we, <laughs> we landed a little bit hard. 
The landing legs were able to take the brunt of the damage. However, because we landed a bit too hard, it tipped over yet again. I seem to be having all kinds of problems keeping my boosters upright when I land them. Yeah, no, probably more often than not they tip over, so maybe that's a design flaw that I need to look into and try and fix that in some other way. Because, well, to be honest, it is not working at the moment. Anyway, we are now at Trap with the Cargo Buzzard. And this was a little bit different. The old Cargo Buzzard was just two stages, and it meant that the entire vehicle was fully reusable. This one, in order to get it to the altitude that Trap is at, which is 750 kilometers, well, I added an upper stage that was going to be an unrecoverable upper stage. It's a little bit of a shame because I would like to be able to fully reuse everything, but at, at the moment I thought, well, it's kind of not something that's vitally important to recover those upper stages. This vehicle is one of the cheaper ones out of the things that I'm launching at the moment anyway, so it's really not that bad that we lose the upper stage. But that is something that I will probably try and do in the future. It also means that the Cargo Buzzard now could probably go visit Lua or Armstrong or something else, and it, it makes it just basically a little bit more useful overall. But we have transferred the crew across and I was too busy talking about the cargo buzzard in order to see who the remaining Kerbals were. MK Kerman, well that's a new face, that was definitely one that I didn't mention, but there is one other. You can probably pause the video when I was messing around with Ship Manifest to see who it was. I am terribly sorry if I missed out your name, although you are in the series anyway, but yes, I, I, I didn't shout it out on the video. Anyway, we are working on Big Chungus, yes. That is the name of the vessel that we have got because I designed it on a live stream and I think that was by far the most popular choice. And the game crashed then when I tried to release it. And then this happened. The game kind of went to a black screen, but fortunately we were able to build this. This is an additional 380 parts at a 240 part station. There are a lot of parts on display right now. There are so many parts that I'm surprised my game didn't cry even more than it already did. This is actually sped up to, I think, 16 times speed. <laughs> That's how slow it is. This is really, really painful to maneuver or do anything with. And the engines that we are running on these, yeah, we've got four of those Neptune trimodal atomic engines. The thrust to weight ratio is abysmal. It's going to take me about an hour burn time in order to get anywhere anywhere interplanetary which is not going to be fun but that's something that i'm going to have to sit through you can see we've barely got any fuel in there at the moment like i did mention we are going to be refueling this later on with more of those liquid hydrogen refueling modules but anyway if you have a name for this interplanetary vessel please leave it in a comment below because i'm not really happy with big chungus as funny as that is we will be sending this interplanetary in the next episode until then i have been kanasa and i will see you later